Hi guys, Freddy here. Welcome back to another Retro RPG. And at the end of another week, and the end of another poll, we've got a very solid win for Chromebook 3 for Cyberpunk 2020, which got over a third of all the votes cast. Now as usual, I'll cover that on the desktop in a wee second, and I'll be back at the end of the video with some other poll related stuff and some other channel related stuff. But a wee reminder, if you'd like to help the channel out, or you'd like to see these videos a week early, then there's a Patreon in the description down below. If you click on that and check it out, you can see how you can help us out. But let's have a look at the Chromebook 3. So, this is Chromebook 3 for Cyberpunk 2020. It came out in 1994 from Artal Zorian Games. And as it says on the cover, the Cyberpunk Style Guide, Volume 3. Now we've covered Chromebooks 1 and 2 on the channel before. And this one continues the trend of moving more away from style towards substance. I've always felt that Cyberpunk was at its best when it was style over substance. Your character might not be the best gunman in the world, he might not have the best cyberware in the world, but if he carries himself with enough charisma, style, just showing off and impressing people, he'll get away with it. And these books kind of were all about that. While there was cybernetics in them, the first Chromebook was mainly cool cars, cool bikes, cool fashions. There was a bunch of tech in there useful as well, but most of it was about style. Chromebook 2 moved away from this, and Chromebook 3 has moved quite a distance. There is no fashion section in this book at all. Um, it's got still got vehicles in it, it's still got cool cyberware, some of which really does go for style over substance taking technology in a different path. You know, you've got stuff which does the same things but looks radically different. But anyway, let's have a look at the back cover. It's back, the one and only 21st century style guide, Chromebook 3. RTD's biggest Chromebook ever, a catalogue of must-have technology. Whether you're street punk or cyber elite, you'll find your gear here. And from flying cars to biotech cyberforms, it'll need fixing. So inside are the first comprehensive maintenance rules for the Cyberpunk 2020 game system. We've got tech equipment, vehicles, cyber modems, personal comps, a new software catalogue, more, more full borgs, robotics, and of course, more cyberware. Remember, Cyberpunk technology is always in fast forward. So if you want to keep that edge, you've got to know the Chrome. Well, the full borgs were actually out of the technology book which had military gear in it. Um, which I've also covered in on this channel. And while they were interesting to have as something you could pull out and use against players, they're not really that much use for players. Inside, well, there's lots of great artwork. It really does capture the idea well. Um, and we go straight in. Equipment, items, and stuff. So we've got things here like the Teletronics Micro Manipulator Rig. An interface monitor, communications accessories from fiber optic cables, repeaters, junctions. Standard stuff that your uh, cyber hacker would want. We've got med tech, so um, rapid detox, limb preservation and transport unit. Now various medical devices, portable intern units, cyber casts. We've got tech clothing. Helmet, boots, but very basic. There's no images of anything here. It's not very fashionable at all. Tech toolkits. Um, a tripod Waldo set, so you can jack into it and control these manipulator arms. Which is something I'll come back to, because this is sensible technology. Where you are adding to what the human's capable of without replacing it. And sometimes this book really does veer in the uh, direction of you want to replace your body. Spider Micro Walder Bracer. So a small wrist mounted thing with extra uh, manipulator arms. Tech scanners. 3D holophones. More cell phone options. An ultra synth. Smart glove. Didn't Nintendo bring one of those out? A lie detector, grapple lines, very handy stuff to have, but it's all very useful. Whereas previous Chromebooks were more useless but cool to have. So we've got combat drugs and trauma drugs. You notice there's a lot of stats and text here, not too many images. 
Although the images are really nice. You know, a sort of mag viewer set of cyber binoculars as they were. Virtual realities, um, so destruction of Pompeii, last hours of the Titanic, D-Day. Um, solo drinker, best-selling houseware in Europe. And then we're onto the cyberware. So this is a standard cyber arm. We've got various versions of that, but it's flesh weave. So has human skin growing through the technology. It's an interesting way of looking at it. We've got cyber eyes here with their big bulging bug eyes. They don't really do it much else. They can contain more cyber optic options than standard cyber eyes, but they just look really different. And these are the things I like where you can make your character radically different. And we've got um, Soviet resale cyberware here, supersized arms. So in the cyberpunk universe, obviously the Soviet Union never fell because cyberpunk started off in the um, late 80s when the Berlin Wall was still up. So the Soviet Union still exists in the cyberpunk universe and they have cybernetics too, but it's these massive clunky versions. So it's a cyber arm, but it's just a big clunky version that you get, you know, being a big Borg. Optical interface, so you can jack into your eye. No, don't really know why you'd want to. I suppose if you don't want to have an obvious jack in the back of your skull or anything, you can hide it behind a contact lens. A chain rip, so instead of having claws which pop out of your arm, you've got a chainsaw with pull start on it, which strikes me as really quite odd. It doesn't automatically go by thought of mind, you've got to pull the rip cord. Cyber legs with high heels built in. Spike body plating. This is all the cool stuff that I really do want out of Cyberpunk. Eyes, where you've got custom video contact lenses. Um, cyber skulls with facial mounts, so you can plug more cybernetics into them. Enable cyber arms, cyber audio implants, cyber optic implants, turn on nails, show off nails. And then we're on to chips, so we've gone through the cyberware already. And that's the high point of the book for me. Um, but we've got sort of chips here which do various things. So an AA, AR chip for determining system malfunction and cause based on the sound of the mechanism. So you can diagnose faults just by listening to them. We've got vehicles. A Benson Violator Hover Cycle. A Takaya Daimyo. Sion Technologies Dune Master, a dune buggy. Hover Transport, Aerodynes. These all look way too complex and expensive for the average street cyberpunk to have. A torpedo police interceptor cycle, which looked more manga, but cyberpunk always was fairly manga. Thunderhawks, Armadillo Armored Road Homes. Surfaced air missile launchers. Really not sure why these are in a cyberpunk book. That should have been in the military. Um, nomad vehicles, combat cycles with a machine gun mounted on the sidecar, Euro wagon. We've got various vehicular options. So puncture proof t tires, bulletproof glass, radiation detectors, homing beacons. Now onto the section about computers, cyberdex software and peripherals. So, personal computers, laptops, personal comps, decks in the form of a star, um, wall-mounted screen, um, a cyber deck which comes in the form of a holster you wear at your hip. Quite cool. Um, I think if they weren't described it would be quite good. Just have your cyber deck however you want it. Cyber modem improvements, so you can get cellular links, extended range. We've got various pieces of software here. Um, Dazzler, Pile Driver, Sledgehammer, Typhoid Mary, Shadow, Threat. Then we're onto Cyber Pets. So basically, cybernetic pets. Digital Watchdog, a small dog with cybernetic eyes to record things. The Cyber Pred, a tiger built, uh, custom built with monomolecular blades on its claws, a cannon mounted on its back, 
armor plating. Um, definitely a surprise a games master can dig out against the players when they break in somewhere and find that the millionaire's house that they're breaking into is guarded by a cyber pred at night. Animal eyes. So animals can be used as spy cameras, as drones essentially. Robots, cyber forms, full borgs and powered armor. So we've got various drones here, a small centipede, a spider, beetle. And on to the full body conversions. So a toxic cleanup body, I can totally get behind that. But the kill there, full medical conversion. A cybernetic body which needs to wear a white coat. I really don't like that. Um, a doctor strikes me as somebody who should be using one of those things where they jack into and it gives them extra manipulator arms as well as themselves. Why do they need to replace their entire body to be more accurate when they could be plugging themselves into something and using that instead? Which strikes me as being far cheaper as well. The Burroughs Mars Operations full conversion. How often are you going to be on Mars? These don't strike me as being very useful at all. These are substance over style. They're not very cool. They are very, very useful in their circumstance. Spider full conversion reconnaissance body so you can become spider-man sensor systems a cyberspace commando full conversion so a cybernetic body used for decking into the computer network really you need a body to do that shouldn't it just be your mind um we've got powered armor here again this is all should have been just in the military book I don't know why they're dragging it into this. Um, various other forms for construction and the like. And then we've got the maintenance rules. So as stuff gets damaged, how to maintain it. So it becomes more likely to malfunction as you don't look after your tech. And then we've got the last few pages, which are price lists. An advert for the Pacific Rim source book, coming in October. So that's Chromebook 3 for Cyberpunk 2020. And that won the poll this week on 34% of the vote. Great to see it winning, because it's been in the poll a few times. And to see it get such a massive win where it got over a third of all the votes cast, it is wonderful to see it get its time in the limelight. Now coming in second place was the Crash Course Manual for Paranoia and Contenders for the Street Fighter role-playing game, both which came in on 18%. Behind them was World Book 17, Warlords of Russia for Rifts, which surprised me, it came in on 15%. But Rifts videos are amongst the most watched on my channel and the most commented on because people disagree with my point of view that Rifts really could have done with a second edition to tidy it up. But totally surprising to see that Rifts doesn't win polls. There hasn't been a Rifts book in a video since 2020, June of. So over two years. A hundred more videos and Rifts hasn't won once. Interesting for me to see that. And very last came Spycraft by Alderac Entertainment Group on only 14%. A D20 based role playing game. Very surprising to me to see it coming in so behind. Now they're all cleared out and we've got a new range of books going in. And for personal reasons, I'm choosing only from books which I know quite intimately, that I've got a lot of experience with, because my research time is being cut down, and I'll explain why in a second. But first of all, we've got Pirates and Privateers for the Star Wars role-playing game. Everybody wants to be Han Solo, everybody wants to be a pirate. This was the book which went into starships, and that kind of lifestyle. A great book. One of the later ones for the Star Wars role-playing game. Really high production quality in that. We've got Infantry Weapons of the World for Twilight 2000. Now I've covered the Heavy Weapons of the World book. These are great delves into American, NATO, Soviet weapons available. But where this one's slightly different is when this book came out as an equipment and arms book. Games Designers Workshop had already started releasing things like Dark Conspiracy. So they included some sci-fi type weapons in here. So as well as M16 assault rifles, AK-47s, there's also laser guns, 
which is kind of a fun thing to put into Twilight 2000. Next up we've got Denizens of Earthdawn, Volume 1. Now, these come out covering the player character races. They're kind of like the complete books in D&D, but they cover several races in each book. And since Earthdawn is one of the most interesting fantasy settings, it's amongst my favourite. I think it and Dark Sun are up there as highest. This is a great book. Um, it goes into some really interesting species and creates fantastic cultures. I remember using this quite heavily when I was playing Earthdawn. Next we've got the Hacklopedia of Beasts, Volume 2. Now it's been ages since I've covered Volume 1. So I thought it was time to bring out Volume 2 and see whether that makes it in and we continue looking through this range. And finally we've got the Dark Tech Sourcebook for Dark Conspiracy Games Design of the Workshop. Alien technology, alien tech, interesting stuff for a fantastic role playing game set as demonic portals open across the world and demons and aliens and monsters come out. A kind of rift setting but more dark horror. Absolutely fantastic stuff. Now the reason I'm including these books is, as I said, I'm more familiar with them. Because my time is becoming more and more limited. As I mentioned in previous videos, my mum was hospitalised about four weeks ago. So I'm having to travel to the hospital and my time every evening is being cut into three or four hours travelling to the hospital, visiting time, etc. Because that's the most important thing, to look after my mum. Well, things have just got worse, and basically this week the family was told that they are moving my mum to palliative end-of-life care. So, this is going to continue for the foreseeable future as we try and make her life as comfortable as possible the last days of it. Now, I really want to... I've committed to this channel, I treat this like part of my job that... I've got times to do this, but I'm going to have to shift that around a bit. Now, the main victim of this is going to be the Discord channel. I was just trying to get it kicked off the ground when this happened, my mum got hospitalised, and it's been sitting there unused. Now, I talked about starting our 1D&D playtest campaign. I don't think that's um, believable. I don't think there's any realistic expectation we can have of getting that going during the playtest period. Or at least for the next few months. We will see where that goes. When I do get the Discord kicked off, I'm going to go with odder role-playing games. I'm going to be going with Price of Freedom, maybe Trinity, maybe the Uzagi Yojimba role-playing game. Maybe some old Games Designers Workshops, you know, Traveller 2300 or something like that. Space 1889. Things which people don't play, because everybody plays D&D, it'd be nice to get some sessions out of these odder, rarer role-playing games. But anyway, I can't commit to any of that at the moment, as I hope you all understand. But, as usual, I think I've witted on for quite long enough, so thank you very, very much for watching. But most of all, as always, you look after yourselves and your loved ones, and I'll catch you later. Bye now.